All right, so um, not a lot of you probably know about Instant Connect. Does anyone know about IPix, the Cisco IPix solution? All right, so Instant Connect is the new name for IPix. It's about connectivity, so push to talk is definitely there. But we really broadened it and really opened it up for a developer ecosystem. So what I'll do to just, for people who don't know about Instant Connect, start off with a video. And uh, that should at least uh, give you a good idea about uh, what we're all about. Let's just start with that. Audio. our dispatch console where people can look at what's going on. We also have our phone you saw that's a ruggedized phone that we can drop and it's you know IP68 rated. This is gonna be on Cisco price list, it's already there. You get locations, you can do push to talk communications. This is a utility use case where for utilities you bring in our solutions to manage the operations here. You can see the, the technician there is talking on the radio they can report back with images and video. Biometrics is another one part of the instant connectivity. You can get your heart rates and vital signs in. So if someone's uh, you know in a dangerous situation, you can monitor them. solution set, I'll go into the presentation and talk more about that. But at a high level, you see what kind of real life use cases you can solve with our solution set. And one more video I just want to show before we move into the presentation. And this is more to wake you up after, uh, after lunch. So this is the phone that I just showed you, and this is our TME uh, putting it to the tests. So you can see here's his car, You'll see and this is the Sonim phone, and he's putting it I took our phones and I drove over right them there, and the camera Jeep. is on. You can see it live. And you can see that not only did I drive over them, I made sure the cameras were facing and up. And right there, and you can see the tire going over the phone live, the and the phone is unbraking. Going right over the top These are the, the phones phone. that we are uh, now, Dan, selling I did that about four uh, as of last to month. Get that take correct. So and if you are interested, just go durable, search for Sonim and Cisco wait, Instant Connect. There's a funny video thing. here where uh, you can see what we do with these phones. With the phone? All right, I'll go I into the presentation then. So what is Cisco Instant Connect? It's a push-to-talk connectivity solution. On top of that, uh, you can do uh, all these kind of connectivity uh, use cases that we just showed. Uh, so let's just walk through, break down the use case uh, that we showed in the video. So that was more for utilities. Uh, a lot of you know in public safety for police, fire, those guys, they use it quite a bit. So let's just walk through a scenario here. Let's say there's an incident, a bank break-in or a robbery, right? So what's the very first step? First step is to detect that something happened. So you've got to have detection. You can have uh, alarms. You can have some crowdsourced. We have some crowdsourced apps built on top of our instant connect platform where people can go in and notify the dispatch that something's going on. At that point, you create an incident. We have a dispatch console. In there, you create an incident. Uh, and then you locate on a map who's the closest police officer. You go in and face that person. And then you get that person to go take care of it. So that, as part of the assessment, let's say the field officer says, oh, there's a suspicious package. I need to page the uh, bomb detection squad. So then the supervisor comes in for the response uh, stage, and then uh, they can do a dial-out notification. You can do an alert blast through our system as well. The bomb expert comes in. We have video sharing from the mobile apps. They can now guide the local officer to uh, take care of things. You can patch multiple 
radio channels together so that the police, the fire, the paramedics are all communicating together to take care of the incident, right? The mayor could dial in, let's say it's an escalated incident. They, we have an IVR system, 1-800-IFIX, you can dial in, and then you can be patched to the whole radio communications. Let's say the suspect goes to the next county, you can, again, do an interrupt channel, patch them all together. After everything's done, you can have recording. Cisco has a recording solution that we also sell with a partner. You can get all of that, you can do some an analytics, and then you adjust your standard operating procedure, uh, tighten your security. So essentially what we're doing is the full life cycle of an incident. Not just push to talk, push talk is there, but we have the dispatch piece of it, we have the reporting piece of it. With the partners, we're filling out the whole solution. At the core, we're push to talk, but beyond that, Instant Connect is filling out the incident response kind of use case. So why do you want to do push to talk? So push to talk, uh, you know, why not just call full duplex phone call? For noisy environments like a factory floor or if you're out there on the field in a mine or something like that, push to talk is the preferred uh, collaboration or communication mechanism. People are used to it. Um, with this, you know, just like voice over IP, you save money. Um, it's great for group communications when you have a lot of people talking together. Uh, when you're in a remote area, when your mobile infrastructure is broken, then you have your radio that you have, your radio, and then you can bring it in with your mobile. It's more like operational communications as opposed to UC, the unified communications. It works great with the Cisco unified communications, but this is more for outdoors, for your factories, for your remote mining, for your, uh, you know, the uh, oil, um, uh, the, the mining operations kind of thing. And it works together with the Jabber and the rest of the Cisco solutions. These are some of the verticals uh, where push to talk is used. So the architecture that we have, the way the Instant Connect works, there, we have all these clients, endpoints. Downstairs, you'll see the IP trade turrets. These are standalone consoles. We have also our PC-based dispatch console. If you go in the corner over there, we have a boot. You can see this in operation. Uh, we have IP phone uh, clients, and we have our own push to talk client, mobile client in your BYOD device on your Android, iOS, you will see that as well. Um, and then we're also working with partners, to, and we're looking for more partners to build out our partner ecosystem. Uh, what supports all of this? In the back end, you can bring in video from wearable cameras or IP cameras. You can have radios coming in through gateways. You have all these radio protocol translators, the gateways. And then we have our servers, a configuration administration server, and a media mixing server. These are all running on Cisco UCS virtualized platforms. So if you have that in the back end, then you can download these clients from Google Play Store or iTunes Store, and you can start communicating uh, over push to talk. And then on top of that, you can have these value added services uh, that you can build or that's available already for the push to talk communications. Here's yet another case for the factories. Uh, other one was detection, assessment. Here it's more issue resolution. As part of the day-to-day -day operation, someone finds an issue, they can communicate with the SONIM and get the remote expert conferenced in, right? Uh, they can get the quality supervisor, they can uh, take care of things, and then you can, let's say, take care of the emergency management situation as well. Let's say uh, there's an all-call eva evacuation that you have to do, you can use digital displays to show where they have to get out of the building. Uh, they can check where everyone is through Cisco CMX or other integration in building location. You can patch in the communications just like our typical case, right? Um, they can look at on with HD video. And finally, after the fact, you can improve your operational response. So these are sort of some of the cases that you can bring our solution to the table. Uh, we have our push to talk application, like I mentioned. If you're in the DOD space, in the defense or public safety space, uh, there's radio features like scanning, there's features like broadcasting, features like priority, the generals like priority, the generals didn't they get priority over the infantrymen. So we have those kind of features uh, available for pure radio uh, kind of cu customers. We have other partner apps, we're showing one of these, this is for school bus, it's completely different from what you would think about a push to talk app. But uh, when you're getting on a taxi, you see taxis talking to dispatcher, in this case, uh, the school bus driver has a tablet, and they can uh, look at where they are, uh, and they can keep track of which students have arrived. They, if someone's late, the parents can get notifications, and then the dispatch can see where everyone is on a route. Right. And right from here, you can do push to talk with the rest of the dispatchers. So 
So again, just a sort of a, you don't think about these kind of solutions when you think about push to talk radios, policemen. You can take our application platform, our Instant Connect, and apply it to these kind of almost far-fetched kind of ideas as well. And that's where we're looking at uh, developers ourselves to help us out. Right, that's we available have, in our SDK, right? It's all developed in our SDK. Our SDK is available on DevNet. I have a couple of slides on that. John can uh, talk about that in a second. Um, and we have this whole bunch of apps that we are delivering, and we want to have more on this uh, app directory that we've set up. One of them is video. We'll see that video streaming. We do push to talk, not only push to talk, but also push to broadcast video is where we're going next. So we're becoming the instant connect platform for voice, video, uh, alerts, uh, and also you'll see an Apple Watch kind of early demo. It's a wearable uh, right there. So, um, so we have a few things that we're working on on this CIC platform. Uh, but the core, again, is the push to talk. Uh, and the way it's structured is you bring in the radios through the gateway. Uh, you have our clients. Uh, you can have uh, interoper interoperability with the unified communications as well. Uh, and all of that comes together in our Instant Connect solution. Where we're going with the, uh, with the SDK uh, that we are making available is we are trying to offer to you a pipe, if you will, a pipe for instant connectivity uh, for your different applications. Not just push to talk, interoperability with Jabber right from there. On this device, there's a left button. You can press that, and you can decide just to trigger on the Sonim. Uh, right here, so there's a left button right here. You can just press here. You can invoke Jabber. You can invoke uh, your um, video, right? Um, you can broadcast video. You can have these wearables that you connect. Um, we're even talking to people like weapon manufacturers. If they can have weapons, wearable weapons, you get some alerts. Uh, so there's all sorts of wearable technology that's out there. And we want to be the platform that you can tie it together and actually have the real-time collaboration communications capabilities. And what we're offering is the alarms, the locations, the data, all of this through our SDK. Our vision is more of a personal uh, person as a hub, uh, where you can uh, bring in all the uh, wearable data and then bring it to the cloud. Uh, if your network is uh, not very good, then you can use your in-vehicle uh, connectivity with your Cisco 819 router. But once you uh, bring in the data in these kind of public safety or other cases, it needs to be moderated communications. It's not just peer-to-peer. -peer. You need a dispatcher to uh, moderate who gets to see what. You don't want to inundate a responder with too much data. Right? So that's where the dispatch part comes in. Uh, and then you have group communications. And this is where some of the partner apps come in. This works side by side with the Cisco's industrial IoT, all the sensor data. You get your heat, humidity, all of that data can tie in, can tie in and get a better decision making that way. And then we have some uh, mass reporting apps as well. So the idea is you have a multi-barrier, resilient, and communication platform that's bandwidth aware, privacy protected, secure, scalable. Right? The core value proposition that we bring to the table here is the push to talk. How am I doing time? All right, I'm good. Uh, we, I already talked about the mobile push talk and sensor platform. If you have a dispatch, if your customer has a dispatch center, if they want to upgrade to the uh, you know, the modern PC-based dispatch, we have that as well. In New Zealand, for example, the earthquake uh, in Christchurch, when that happened, New Zealand, the country is running on our software, the policemen, fire, emergency. When that earthquake happened, the dispatchers went out of the building. Since they're on this mobile platform, they were operational right away outside. Right? So that's the flexibility of this next generation technology. And the radio interrupt, of course, uh, that we bring to the table through IPEX. Already mentioned New Zealand police. Um, in the World Cups, we have these trucks. You've probably seen the NARF truck downstairs. It has IPIX and Instant Connect right in there. If you have more questions about any of these solutions, happy to answer any of them. We have a couple of slides on the SDK itself for the developers, since this is DevNet. John, maybe you want to sure. cover that? OK, so uh, one thing that we're, we're uh, introducing is Instant Connect Express. It's sort of an IPIX light. Uh, and what we're showing here is uh, the typical deployment uh, of a light system like that, where we have a single IPIC server VM and an audio mixer VM, what we call UMS, uh, and then a bunch of mobile clients hosted on that over a Wi-Fi or LTE network. Um, and like the slide says, our SDKs are available on Android, iOS, and Windows. 
So these are some of the SDK requirements. Uh, I'll publish these slides after the talk if you, uh, I realize that's a bit of an eye, char <laughs> eye chart there. Um, move on. Um, and basically I'm just highlighting here uh, the, the, the main interfaces in our SDK. Um, pretty simple SDK, it, it basically log in, log out, give me my list of channel resources, start PTT and stop PTT. Uh, and beyond that, uh, you also receive events for talker ID and, and, uh, <clears throat> and stuff like that. So what this allows you to do is it gives you great flexibility to reskin the app uh, to do whatever you want. Uh, there, there's no UI imposed uh, on, on this SDK. Um, so you're free to uh, fold that into your applications as you see fit. So the basic login sequence diagram, uh, your main activity, assuming you're, um, just for an Android example here, your main activity would call our login that goes into the SDK layer and then comes back as a notification of success uh, back to your server callback. And similarly, uh, if you start a PTT sequence, um, your, P uh, your button handler, uh, as you depress that, uh, would invoke the PTT start SDK method. Um, again, that goes into the SDK layer, and similarly, uh, you get a notification back to your media callback. Pretty simple. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can take a look at our uh, sample application. Uh, we have learning labs available over here in the learning lab area. Uh, and we offer, uh, or we encourage you to take a look at those. Uh, and the SDKs are available uh, off of DevNet, uh, so you can take a look at them also when you get home. Uh, for additional information, here's some URLs. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to stop by in the back. Uh, we're over here by the uh, IoT booth. We have a few more minutes. I'm gonna finish out that video that we were seeing earlier. Uh, any questions while I get that up? Yes, it works with Jabber. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, start. Let's start from the beginning. Hi, I'm Dan O'Malley from Cisco. I'm Rick the Radio Guy. And Dan, we've been playing a lot today with these uh, Sonom phones. And tell me, what's special about them? Well, they're rugged. Our customers traditionally use a off-the-shelf uh, cellular phone, a mobile phone. And what's nice is they have a push-to-talk button. They have a front camera, a back camera. And most importantly, it, it's IP68 and IP69 rated. Well, what does that mean, Dan? Well, it means that it's you can throw it um, from any 10 feet or more. You can submerse it underwater. You can do a lot of abuse to this phone. Well, you know, Dan, it's funny you mention phone abuse because this weekend I talked to our friend Bob, who provides us the phones, and I asked him for some samples, and I borrowed your phones, and we did a little phone abuse of our own. So if we look over here at the monitor, Dan, you'll see, well, first of all, per Bob's suggestion, I took our phones and I drove over them with my Jeep. And you can see that not only did I drive over them, I made sure the cameras were facing up and we've actually got video of the wheels going right over the top of the phone. Now, Dan, I did that about four times to get that take correct. So we know they're pretty darn durable, but wait, that's just one thing. What else might I want to do with a phone? I took it up the ladder as I was doing some things on the roof, and well, Dan, I went to put it back in the holster, and it didn't quite make it. So you can see the phone kind of taking the drop there, down to the hard concrete below, and still it's working. Now, I believe they say that it is supposed to be three meters drop test, but uh, you know, that's a little higher than that. Now, this might be something that your facilities people, your folks out in the field, uh, maybe a firefighter, somebody who's a uh, lineman, somebody who's doing rugged service might drop this off their belt. And although we don't recommend you do it, these types of things can happen. Ah, now this video here, the phone got a little bit dirty in some of the testing, so we decided to clean it up. And I know, Dan, that you at one point had familiarity with commercial kitchens. You recognize that dishwasher? 
That's a commercial dishwasher. That's, that's a Hobart commercial dishwasher. And we put the phone in it. I put another phone facing it. And you can see video from inside the dishwasher. And then you'll see the phone ring. And I open the door. And I take it out. And everything is still working. After a hard day shooting, we go out and we kick back by the pool. I toss the phone out. Oh, OK. Phone goes to the bottom of the swimming pool. Up it comes again. Still working. So Dan, when we finished up at the swimming pool, we went back home. And unfortunately, this happened in the bathroom. I'll see you later. Bye. And I'm told that this happening in the bathroom is a fairly common thing. And the other thing is, Dan, that was your phone. What? So what I wanted to do here was take your phone. And I've got this solution that I've made here of uh, this is a quarter cup of bleach going into my gallon of water here. That's a pretty standard sanitizing solution. We'll mix it up really well. We'll put the phone in there. Matter of fact, uh, if you want, you can try talking to it while it's in the Testing, one, two, three, four, and, and it is receiving. It is receiving. I hear it down there in the tank. We'll, we'll come out. Now, you notice I've got the glove hands on. Testing, one, two, three, four, and you hear me coming out over there. So, Dan, it survived the sanitizing test. And it also has a glove touchscreen mode that you can turn on when you're using gloves, Rick. Absolutely. So there we go. These are the new uh, Sonom XP6, XP7, very rugged, very durable phones available through Cisco. Thank you. And running Cisco Instant Connect. <laughs> All right. All right, any questions? Who is that? I wonder. <laughs> oh, yes. Is the P25 integration a Cisco product, or is that a third-party product? It's, uh, you can buy the Cisco integrated P25 gateway from Cisco. The Cisco ISSI gateway is what it's called. ISSI, and there's also DFSI. If you know the technology, there's ISSI and DFSI, two different technologies. And uh, we have gateways for both available. And we have native encryption on the client as well. Um, so if you have uh, more questions, I can give you more details on that. Hi there. Um, curiosity about the, the phone hardware itself. Uh, why doesn't it float? Can you move it closer, please? Sorry. Why doesn't the phone float? <laughs> why doesn't the phone float? Because I guess it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, here, catch. <laughs> Any other questions? So we're on the corner over there, the last uh, booth over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're happy to show some of these other demos over there. Yeah. Just uh, under Apple the Watch. IoT banner. Yeah. So we have a few more things, and uh, we'd love to show you what we have. Yeah, and come right. by and check Thanks, out guys. the iWatch. That was an awesome demo. Thank you very much.